the sentencing phase of U.S. Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl's court-martial neared its end today at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. The soldier pled guilty to severe charges, including desertion and misbehavior before the enemy, which could carry heavy prison terms. Bergdahl was captured by the Taliban in 2009 after he walked away from a military outpost in eastern Afghanistan. He was held in captivity for five years. The Obama administration engineered a controversial prisoner swap with the Taliban in 2014 for his release. For more on Bergdahl and the searing testimony at a sentencing hearing, we turn now to New York Times reporter Richard Oppel at Fort Bragg. So the defense has made their case. What was it? Well, that's right, Hari. The case has a couple of prongs for the defense. Uh, one is that Bergdahl has uh, already paid a huge price for what happened. Five years of, of horrific torture, being beaten by copper cables constantly, uh, constant dysentery and diarrhea, locked in a cage for four years. Uh, they also are presenting mental health, health testimony uh, that he's had a, a, a severe mental disorder for some time, including, in their view, when he uh, both was in briefly in the Coast Guard at boot camp and then when he enlisted in the Army. Uh, they've also put on testimony that when he returned uh, after the prisoner swap in 2014, even though he did not have any sort of uh, promise of protection from prosecution, he was uh, emphatically helpful to intelligence analysts, to debriefers from the Pentagon, to anybody in the U.S. government who wanted to talk to him about Taliban tactics, about, uh, about his captors, and anything of that nature. You know, the prosecution still has an opportunity to rebut, but during their side of the case, they brought on some of the family members and some of the members who have, were injured in the process of trying to rescue Bergdahl. That's right. They had uh, powerful testimony, mainly about one uh, rescue operation or one mission where uh, a, a team of six men with some Afghan troops, six American men, were trying to gather information from local villagers about where Bar Bergdahl might be. This was a little over a week and a half, I'm sorry, a little over a week after Bergdahl uh, had left his base. Uh, and one of the men, uh, Sergeant First Class, was, uh, was shot in the head. Um, he now is unable to speak, read, write, communicate in any way, or even take care of himself. Um, and two other men were wounded on that mission, but, but the most profound injuries were of this one sergeant first class, uh, uh, a National Guardsman from Georgia named Mark Allen. So there was a lot of testimony about his injuries and also testimony from his wife, Shannon, about how much, uh, you know, everything changed enormously for their family, for, for their two kids and for her. But what about Bergdahl's decision to plead guilty to this? How did this change at all? Well, uh, to a lot of military law experts, uh, you know, a, a conviction was almost certain uh, in large part due to the fact that Bergdahl had uh, talked extensively to Army investigators and, and really actually had answered every question that was uh, put to him by Army investigators. Uh, so the prosecution already had an enormous amount of evidence through Bergdahl's own uh, words to convict him on. So by pleading guilty, you know, what he was doing was basically, uh, you know, in the, in the view of a lot of military law experts, that this was basically a gamble that, you know, he's taking absolute contrition uh, and responsibility for what he did, uh, again, in hopes of demonstrating to the judge who will decide his punishment that he has absolutely taken uh, uh, responsibility for what he's done. You know, did the president's comments both before and after he was elected factor into this? Yeah, so uh, the comments, the very inflammatory comments that the president had as a candidate, uh, the judge had ruled in February that while they were disturbing comments, he did not think they had prejudiced the case, even though Trump had obviously been elected and his commander in chief uh, was now in charge of everybody in the military justice system. Uh, but then a couple of weeks ago, right after Bergdahl enter his, entered his pleas, Trump said uh, words to the effect of, uh, look, I can't comment on, uh, on the case. You know, it's about to go before a sentencing hearing. But I think everyone, uh, you know, knows what I've said in the past about that. And so the judge ruled that, um, you know, he was effectively trying to say to people, uh, you know, everyone, you know, people know how I feel about this and my, I, I haven't changed my opinion. Uh, so, so on the one hand, the judge did not find that the comments, however, had prejudiced the case because, A, he is a decision maker, he said, was uninfluenced by his, uh, his comments and, and the judge pointed out that he is actually going to retire next year. And he also felt that the, uh, uh, the public had not 
you know, their view of the military justice system had not been really harmed, that perception yeah. had not been harmed by the comments. However, uh, and this is the key thing, the judge said he will take the comments, he, he, con he, he will consider the comments as mitigation evidence when he decides a sentence. It's not clear how much weight he will give those comments, maybe a little, maybe a lot, but they will be one factor in sentencing uh, that, that could help Bergdahl receive a lighter sentence. All right. Richard Oppel, The New York Times, joining us from North Carolina. Thanks so much. Thank you, Hari.